Good day everyone. So today, we will be solving problems in Python using functions. So let's go to our problem number one. So here, we're going to create a fruitful function with parameter that will return the area of the triangle using the formula area is equals to base times height divided by 2. So we know that a fruitful function is one that uh, returns a value. Okay, so let's open our IDE and then let's try to solve the problem number one computing the area of a, uh, a triangle i mean so we have to start with the keyword depth that's the first rule to define a function and then let's give it a function name i will call it area t for area of your triangle since the values needed to compute for the area is your base and height that will be our parameters so base and height and you have to end it with a colon. The moment you press enter, the cursor is already indented. It means that is the start of the body of your function. So you can now type your statement. So we're going to compute for the area and return it. So return base times height divided by 2. So that's the computation inside our function. How are we going to call it? Okay, so let's try to read some values. Let's say b is equals to float. We'll try to use float. So if ever you will be entering number with decimal values, that will still be accepted. So input, enter base of triangle. Okay, and then I will copy this. I will now read the height. Okay, so enter height of triangle. So the value that you're going to enter in your keyboard will be stored in the variable B and the height will be stored in variable H. Now to call the function, okay, so you need this function call. I have there the name of the function which is area T. And then the parameters are base and height. You're going to replace this with your argument. So B is the argument for the base. And H is the argument for the height. Okay. So we can also include some um, messages here. Let's say area of triangle with base B. And the height H is this, okay? The area that will be returned by the function called area T. So when we run our program, okay, let's try to enter 7.5 as the base and then 10 for the height of the triangle. So the computed value is 37.5. So this is an example of a fruitful function, function that will return a value and at the same time, it has parameters. Okay, let's go to our example number two. In example number two, we are tasked to create a fruitful function that will return multiple values. To create a program that will read two numeric values and will compute for the sum, difference, product, and quotient of the two numbers. So in this function, uh, there are four computations required to uh, come up with the needed values, the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of two numbers. What is the requirement? A fruitful function returning multiple values. Okay. So, let's go back to our IDE. Let's solve problem number two. So, here, we're going to define our function again. So, that will compute the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of two numbers. So, that num1 and num2 parameters will serve as variables for our 
number 1 and number 2, the two numeric values. So what are we going to compute? We need to compute for the sum is equals to num1 plus num2. We're going to compute for the difference is equals to num1 minus num2. We're going to compute for the product is equals to num1 multiplied to num2. And we also need to compute for the quotient which is num1 divided by num2. Now, since we have computed four values, we're going to return all these four values. So, return sum, dip, product, and quotient. So, how are we going to call the values from our main program? So, we need to read the values of your uh, number 1 and number 2. So, let's say N1 is equals to float input enter a number. N2 is equals to float input enter I'm sorry second number. Okay. Now, since we have your N1 and N2, then we're going to have a function call. So, the function call will be, or it should be assigned to our four variables also. Let's say we have S uh, for sum, D for different. P per product and Q per quotient is equals to compute and then we have to put N1 and N2. So this one, when we call this function, then it will return these values and we were going to store it in our SDPQ variables which represent the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient values respectively. So now we can now uh, display it. So print sum of and is uh, we can put it directly there. Okay, so sum of n1 and n2 is S. Copy paste difference of N one and N two is D. Then we have the product of N one and N two is P. And we have the quotient of N1 and N2 is Q. Okay. So let's try to run this program. Okay. I want to enter 5 and 3. So you see the 5 and 3 values which are stored in your N1 and N2 are your arguments and it will be passed to your function. So it will return all the computed values. Okay, so the sum of 5 and 3 is 8, the difference is 2, the product is 15, and the quotient is 1.67 if it will be rounded up. Okay, now let's go to problem number 3. So in problem number 3, you have to write a program that will read a person's name and a greeting code. The greeting code is a set of numbers representing different languages of saying thank you. Set 1 as the default value for the greeting code. So these are the greeting codes. 1 is Shukran, 2 is Mercy, 3 is Salamat, 4 is Sheshe, and 5 is Thank You. If it is, an, if it is other numbers, then still updating the database so in this particular problem uh, we're going to set a default parameter value for the greeting code okay what is the default parameter value it's one okay let's try to solve this 
We'll open this again. So it will accept name and a greeting code, which default value is 1. So def, I want to say the function name is greeting. It will accept the name of the person and the greeting code, which we need to assign a default value equals to 1. Okay, what is the purpose of assigning a default value? If in case the user will not specify any value for the greeting code, still the program will return something. So there will be no error. Now, here we have to check for the G code. So if G code is equals to 1, our greeting will be, what's in the greeting? Let me go back. Shukran. Okay, so that's the default. L if G code is equals to 2, so the greeting will be mercy. L if, oh, I did not copy the L. G code is equals to 3. So it should be indented. GRT should be salamat. L if G code is equals to 4. GRT is equals to sheshe. And then L if G code is equals to 5. GRT is equals to thank you. Otherwise, the GRT will be updating the database because there's so many greetings in so many languages. So that's it. Now, we have to print the name. Okay. Name. Ah, it should be variable. Name. I want to say. And then your GRT. Okay, print. Name. I want to say. And what's the greeting? Now, what will happen during the function call? Let's say I want to print. Okay, greeting. So, greeting. So, what's the name? Let's say, Sheka. And then, I specify 3. Of course, when I run this program, Sheka, I want to say, Salamat. So, that's the greeting for code number 3. Okay? Now, what if I did not specify a greeting code? So, that is the purpose of assigning a default value. Since you did not specify a greeting code or a user did not specify a greeting code, automatically it will display something based on the default parameter value. And what is the default one? What is in one? Shukran. So, when I run this program, Sheka only, then run. Sheka, I want to say Shukran. That will be... Our lessons for functions in terms of solving problems. See you in my next video, guys.